we're going to take a look at how I operate my turnouts on my module right there. So let's get going with this right now. Hi, I'm Tom Kovichak, and this is Tom's Trains and Things. This channel was created to help other modelers who are in need of guidance in pursuing their dream of building a model railroad. Previously, I discussed how I mount my turnouts, how I made them removable, what I used on it, like the servos and how I mounted the servos on there and all that other good stuff. So now we're going to see how I operate it. I'm using an Arduino Uno right now to test it out, but when I have it mounted in my control panel, I'll be using a Nano. I'll be able to use the same shield because the shield can be used for both a Nano and an Uno. I have a relay module that has four relays on it. And we'll be doing another video on that to show you how to hook that up and an external power supply for the relays. Now with the Nano, I could put a power supply on both the relay module and the module that I plug the Nano into it. So that'll keep it safer right there. So let's take a look at this right here. I'm going to I'm going to take a walk back there and see what it looks like. This is the single turnout that goes off of the module. And this is the crossover right here. I'm using an Arduino Uno, but later on I may be using a Nano. That's where I have everything connected in. I have a push button here. This is my first push button for this turnout right here. This is the push button for this crossover right here. The relays are right here. I'm using three. One for this one here to change the frog power and the next two to change the frog power on these frogs over here. Here's the indicator that's going to be on the control panel. First one for the turnout and the second set is over here for the crossover. So no power on it right now. Let me apply power. Okay, as you can see now, all of them are in the straight position or the closed position, which I call them on here. The sketch calls for if I press the push button, it'll change from the closed position to the thrown position. So, so watch this one right here. Okay, let me push the button. It's throwing. It changes to red. And you can see this relay actuates. Now this relay actuates and so it'll change the position of it from the normally closed to the normally open. So now the the points are closed on the normally open side of the of the relay. So we'll push it back again and it goes back to the closed position. Now the same thing on the crossover. I'll press the button and you can see it right here. Here is the position right here for that side. And here's the position right here for this side over here. I'm not sure if you can see the points real good, but let's take a, let's take a look at it. The points move to the, the throne position and the two relays switch over here. Now you'll notice that the relays do not actuate and the indicator light does not actuate until the, the points are all the way thrown. So let's look at it again. I'm going to press the button. There they go. They're over. And you can, you can see that the relay disengaged and you have a green light right there. Okay, I have a little bit closer view of it. Here's the push button right here. It's turning. And you can see that that turned red and that relay came on. Now this push button over here is out of camera range, but I have it right here. I'll push it. You can see that turning. You got a red and all three relays are energized right now. Now let me bring them back. Boom. That one. And this one here.
I created two sketches for this project. The one on the left is the working sketch. And the one on the right is a sketch for testing. You're going to want to test your components one by one to make sure that they're working, especially the servo and especially the relay. You want to make sure that your contacts on the relay are connected in the right place. So this is where you want to test each individual one with this sketch. Now you'll see down here, I have everything commented out with these double slashes and the server one right 90 equal false. That is in the center up position. And you could adjust your servo to go from one side to another by using this right here. All you have to do is change the value and then compile it and upload it again to the new value and it will move your servo. You could do that with everything on here. You could also change the pin designation for the different components on here so you could test every one that you are using. The left one is the working sketch. You'll notice that I have a library in here, var speed servo. And what this does, this slows down the servo. It has a range from one to 255. And you'll notice down here that I have them set to three. So it's pretty close to the slowest speed that you could get. You have to identify everything, very speed servo, the three turnouts. These are the three servos that I have, what pin that they are on, the buttons, the LEDs, and the relays. And then the button push counter, if you're using a push button, this is so you could use a push button and it will actuate it and wait for the next button press to happen. In the void setup, I have the serial monitor so you could check the serial monitor to see what sketch you have loaded on your Arduino. Your servos, you attach it to the pins, blah, blah, blah. Okay, set turnout to close position straight on startup. This may not be needed because it, it does the same thing because your first command in your loop, it takes it to that position 90 80 and 80 right there pin mode that's identify your leds for each one the button pins and the relays here are the two procedures that i have in here turnout drive zero and turnout drive one the zero is for the single turnout the one is for the crossover now the first part of this is just for the button press from right here all of this right here, well, actually this too right here, is checking to see if there is a button press and the conditions of it. This first line, if button push counter one it percent two equals zero, this is the default position of the turnout. So the turnout is straight. And you'll notice that I have turnout one is set to false and turnout two is set to true. I'll talk to you about that whenever we push the button. Both relays are set to high because the relays are actuated on low. So it's normally closed right now, and that's the way we want it to have it. Normally closed, turnout is straight, and so we're wiring it for that position right there. LED1C, that's the green one, we can have that as high. And LED1T, that's the throne position to have at as low. That's off at the time. That will sit there and continue to repeat itself over and over and over again until you have a button press. And once you press the button, you go into the else statement. The else statement, it turns it into the throne position. Turn out right 103, false. And then the second one is true. When you have false in there, this line will actuate start actuating and immediately go to this line right here and run this one also when this is set to true it will wait until this line is finished before it goes into the next line that way both servos turn at the same time both relays they'll go pop up like that and go low and that'll be in the actuating 
position, and that will change to the normally open contacts for your throne position. Then be closed so you'll have power on those. If you want to have your relays actuate immediately, you could set both of these to false. And what it'll do, this line will start to actuate. It'll drop down to this line and actuate. It won't wait for it to get finished and it'll immediately turn the relays. I decided to stop it until it reaches the desired position and then throw the relays and then change the LEDs on it. And this one will continue to go through this and it'll wait for a state change again. Once that state change changes when you push the button, it'll go back up to the top right here and put it back into the straight position. Now that happens with all the turnouts. Now you can see up in this first one, I used this serial print line to troubleshoot to see what part of the procedure I was in. But basically that is all there is to it. You just have to identify everything in here. All the pin numbers are right here, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 on the Uno, all down one end. You don't use 0 and 1. And on the Nano, you'll have the same thing, except you have a couple of extra analog pins on the other side. You have two extra analog pins. But on, the, on both the Uno and the Nano, the analog pins you could also use as digital input pins. All the components on this project can be found on my Amazon store page with the exception of the push button modules which can be found on the DF robot page. Okay the first item is the servos. Now these servos here are the ones that I have on order right now and I haven't received yet but the original ones are from Waveshare but they are the ones with the metal gears they work a lot better. The relay board is this one right here. I ordered this a long time ago as you can see I ordered this back in 2018. It's only seven dollars. This shield here it's a combination Nano and Uno shield, and you could see that you could plug the Nano in the center, or if you want, you could use it as a shield for an Uno, but you have to solder your own pins in it because it doesn't come with the pins. So you have to put your own pins in there for it to work as a shield. The next item I didn't use here, but I also have these. These are a Deke Robot, for a nano and this is a breakout board for a screw terminal so if you don't like the uh, shield you could also use this right here of course there's the arduino uno you can get them cheaper other places you can get the off brands cheaper also here's a power supply similar to the one that i oops similar to the one i used it's a 5 volt, 5 amp AC to DC power supply. Here are two of the servo testers that I used. That one right there. And this is the older one that I used right there. They're both valuable. If you would like to use more relays, there is a SunFounder 8 channel relay board, which works just as well. Here are the Nanos. You can get three of them for $16. If you look around, you could probably get them a lot cheaper. Here is the digital push button, the yellow from DF Robot that I use. They come in different colors. The link for the DF Robot is also in the description. It's one of my affiliates. The library I used in this project can handle up to eight servos at one time. That means it can operate eight servos simultaneously. I'm working on a project right now with a Mega. I have it on a DF Robot Mega Shield, which 
I have four of them hooked up right now just testing things out. I may do a video on this shortly. So I hope you enjoyed this. I'm going to be doing a video on the relay modules. You could get them one, two, four, eight, and 16. There is no documentation for that. And what is written in the Amazon pages is a little bit confusing. So I'll be explaining that a little bit better. So until the next time, we'll see ya.